morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on this Tuesday. I hope it finds you well out there. Remember yesterday, I said 2030. Look out for gold 2030. Uh, gold 2033. In, in rising, uh, we are now at the highest levels of the year, uh, all-time highs. What, what, what are we, Jason? Thirty, forty dollars away uh, from all-time record high gold prices. Silver, uh, twenty-four ninety-seven. Not quite twenty-five yet. Uh, boy, a lot of people. A lot. I've been getting so many emails uh, with these people talking about silver prices. Uh, big numbers, the numbers that I don't even talk about. Uh, go to allamericangold.com today. Another really, it's hard to argue with a lot of the data points out there, but uh, this guy calling for $100 silver, uh, that's a lot tamer than some of the calls uh, that I'm seeing lately. And it's just, uh, again, supply, demand, uh, silver, believe it or not, we're actually, I don't know, I want to say it's peak silver because it's too early to say, but. Uh, silver mining production is down this year. Uh, that's something where, you know, gold is still up, uh, not quite as quite where it's been. And, and you know, it, gold's up because the prices are really high and, and the miners are going at there. It's just, it just takes so long to get these mines uh, to start producing. So it's going to be very, very interesting. We got a great show lined up for you. Our toll-free number, 800 951 Zero five nine two. The website at allamericangold.com. Don't forget, follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Rumble. Uh, like us. Give us the thumbs up uh, and, and do those things. I, I'll say this. Uh, we, we've got a, a YouTube hater when it comes to housing. Uh, yesterday, he called me ignorant. said, oh, I'm ignorant about we're talking about new home sales. Uh, we had a, a big drop. In new home sales uh, for yesterday, I mean, well, for for October, uh, and it, it's something where. Uh, and by the way, I apologize to all you guys on YouTube. As I'm telling you to follow us, I didn't hit the record button. I've hit it now, uh, so so we'll be recording. Uh, but uh, he he may. It's, and it's the second time he's commented. Uh, he he doesn't. Uh, know what he's talking about, unfortunately. Uh, new home sales, uh, he made the comment that they always fall this time of year. You know what's funny? That made a lot of sense. Well, yeah, kind of coming up on the holidays, gets a little colder. So, And I think that logic used to be true. Uh, unfortunately, since the Federal Reserve destroyed housing, and believe me, they destroyed it. And going back before the financial crisis, the housing crash, right? Bankers behaving badly and the Fed uh, really not doing their job. Uh, all, all of those things uh, happen. But they got to remember, especially like Arizona, probably maybe more than other places, we had a lot of projects that got, you know, places where they scraped the ground. Some places they put the sewers in. And in, in even even some of the streets and the curbing uh, was in and, and left, you know, vacant, right? Uh, now, a lot of those here uh, in, in town, and, and most of those probably farther out, like Casa Grande and, and Coolidge and places like that. Uh, but, but all of those now pretty much, uh, I think, and I don't know, I haven't driven that far south. Uh, but a lot of these projects are, are now back underway, or, but, but it took a long time. Uh, believe it or not, uh, new housing sales, 2021, higher in October, higher in November, higher in December from month over month. And then I'm like, well, okay, well, maybe 2022, same thing. So even Christmas didn't affect them. Uh, and again, I think actually uh, if if we talk to the guy that was uh, making the guy, I'm assuming he's in housing, we probably have the very same opinions. Uh, but but maybe the message is lost. I'll say this. Here, here's the thing you need to know. Because today, just so you know, uh, we, we got home prices overall. So take new homes, take existing homes. They're up again. Yeah, home prices are rising again. 
And it makes sense. Because remember what we said last week about existing homes. Remember, I told you the, the story about my neighbor, the house next to me. It pl- priced well below market, but no buyers. Because it's going to cost a ton of money to, to get it right. But if it's right, if your house is right, it's going to sell. And it'll probably get multiple offers. Because of the fact that there's no inventory, especially on existing homes. Uh, even like like Phoenix, I mean, home sales here, they're way down, but they still sell. I mean, really, when you look at the amount of homes, there's just not that many, right? So if it's right, it, it goes for a good price. Here, here's the thing that, that I'll, I'll say about housing, and then I, and I'll leave it alone. But two things. Number one, A, I'm not ignorant. And it's unfortunate uh, that that you you don't know what I know. I'm sorry. But having said that, new home prices are down year over year. And they kind of peaked last October. Almost a nine-month supply of new homes. Now, remember what I said about new homes. Yes, I think this this is an. I think new home sales are going to pick up in, in November because remember the rates have fallen, and of course the home home buyers, right? They're doing all the rate buy downs, all that stuff. We'll see. I could be wrong. Let's hope I'm wrong, or let, no, I'm sorry. Let's hope I'm right. But if we ever get supply back into the existing home market. I think that's going to be the only time we're going to see home prices fall. If it doesn't, I don't know that it will. Patriot Radio News Hour, the ignorant guy. We'll be back right after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Already a tough start. I forgot the. I hit the record button a little late. I apologize. Uh, Jason had to reboot over there, Uh, but uh, nonetheless, listen. Like I said, join us on YouTube. Jo- join us on Rumble. Go out there, follow us, subscribe to us, like us, give us the thumbs up. And, and again, I'm, not, I'm poking fun at the guy. You, it's fine. I, you know, my, my friends will tell you uh, they they say I don't have any feelings. I have a little bit of feelings, uh, you know, just a little bit. And you're right. I'm ignorant. My wife will tell you I'm ignorant about a lot of things. Really ignorant. Uh, none of the stuff I talk about on there, at least in my opinion, uh, am I uh, that way. But but again, uh, today, so like I said, we you know you get housing, We talk about housing every month. I've been doing it for twenty years. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm not worried. I don't think, uh, and I've said this all along. I don't think we have. Uh, uh, you know, when you think about existing homes, which is the majority, right? You're talking 1993 levels. That that's not healthy, but there's no inventory. So as long as those two match, right? I mean, sales could go even lower, right? I mean, they could. As long as the inventory is going, it's interesting. Too soon to tell. Uh, w- 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 let's wait till January on new homes. Let's see how much of this inventory get sucked up here because almost a nine month supply that, that that's a little heavy that, that that that's a little heavy and of course what did we see we saw prices fall i mean they're still outrageously expensive but but they fell uh, jason i don't think we're going to see uh existing homes i don't think we're going to see home prices falling like we said until people get fired i think that's i think that's true and I, I, I've also seen a chart where the uh, the inventory is spiking upward right now, spiking upward. So uh, I, th- I think we're getting you know we're getting the market the Fed wants you know to, to where they could control their inflation and I guess have the dream of maybe bringing rates down and maybe printing money again. But but uh, ir- ir- uh, uh, ignorant is not the right word, Joe. I- ignorant is is uh, implying that you have no knowledge of. You know, ignorance. Oh, he does. He just. Well, doesn't I think that was know. his point. He he wants to per, he wants to think. Yeah, I don't. You, uh, it's ridiculous because you have knowledge of arrogant. Maybe that would have been better. Hey, Joe thinks he knows everything, and he's just wrong. Maybe <laughs> maybe maybe you should use arrogant. But ignorant means it's ridiculous. Here you just you went through a segment plus of talk about the housing market. That's not ignorant. 
So, so uh, <laughs> I just find it interesting when people take a stab, Jody. If you can take a stab, at least try to not be arrogant. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, listen, I, and, and I don't want to stop people from coming. Comment. It's a fine. It, uh, if you get fine. drunk out of here, here's the thing. Here's the one thing. I have a microphone. They don't, right? So, you know, at the end of the day, I guess I can always get the word, last word in. I love it. It's great. It actually made me go look. I'll be honest. I, I, I thought I was right, but I had to go look. So I even went to 2019. It was the same thing in 2019. Oddly, because... His comment made sense. Yeah, it's, it's the holidays. At least, and I don't know about it. And again, we're talking new homes. Just, in the new home market, that hasn't been true. Uh, but again, I, I think we'll get a bounce back because of the rates falling. We'll see. I hope we do. If not, th then it'll be interesting. It, it may signal. Now, don't freak out. Real estate guy, don't, don't get mad. It may signal that did we hit the peak here, and are we going to see people starting to refuse to pay? Or here's the other thing to think about. So we just had Fed Governor Waller come on TV. They love to be on TV. Talking about the economy has slowed, and we, we may not have to raise interest rates at, again you know, this has been kind of their thing, but but remember what people the 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 people the, the Wall Street cheerleaders I'll call them the rah rah people. They're all telling you the Fed's going to cut rates. I'm just saying, if I didn't have to move today, let's just say, hey, I want to move. My wife and I, we want to move, or we're ready to buy. If I'm watching TV. I'm probably going to wait. Hey, let's wait till after the holidays. Let's see if they cut rates, right? Why buy now? And, and, and it could be one of those. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, but anyway, uh, I wanted to have a little fun with the guy. How's that? Yeah, well, it's always good to have the discussion because that's what the show is for. We're trying to, to unravel what's going on and give the best uh, information to the audience, Joe. So it's uh, it's it's good information. You know, the housing market is, uh, and, and you know, just like oil, these are huge indications of what's going to happen with the uh, the markets and what somebody should do. Because we got listeners that are, hey, should I sell a house? Should I buy a house? You know, it, it sh should I buy gold now? Should I wait to buy uh, stocks? You know, things like that. We try to answer as many of those questions as we can. And I'll tell you right now, Joe, this is not a time to be in a lot of debt. I'll tell you, this is not a place to be in debt or interest rates going down. If Even if that does happen, I think we very briefly lived and uh, rates going up next year, middle, late next year, you know, 2025, we'll, we're going to see rates go up. Inflation is going to hit us. It's going to hit this country and the rest of the world so hard. It's coming back. It's grafted in. It's, we've got historic and we're and we're looking at you know they didn't print the kind of money and have the kind of debt we have now back in the seventies. Look what happened. Yeah. Inflation's coming back. The rates are going to go up at some point, whether it be a year, six months, eighteen months. You're going to see rates go up because the inflation is going to go ridiculously high, Joe. Well, I'm going to say this: you're just ignorant, right? Because I don't believe that, <laughs> right? I, I don't, I don't, I don't think they will. But here's the thing, right? We, we Jason and I, we, we're not sure. Right, we we we, we kind of uh, disagree here, but but Jamie Diamond's in Jason's corner. He he has been unrelenting. Uh, he was out again yesterday, saying that the the nine trillion dollars of cash unleashed during the pandemic by the central bank is the equivalent of heroin. And said that the U.S. economy is now an a addict to debt. And, and to Jason's point, right? Hey, you guys think you're solving this problem? Uh-uh. You 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 created all of this money out of thin air. It's not going away. He said that the world is now facing what he's calling a dangerous cocktail. Something that uh, could prove explosive in the global economy. Now, again, this isn't someone like me. 
you know, hey, I got a radio show, uh, I got some YouTube followers, you know, m- making these uh, comments, or a podcast guy trying to get you to buy a subscription or whatever it is. No, this is Jamie Dimon. He said that we are now spending way more money than we should be. And saying even though the United States, the forefront of innovation, says that the amount of money printed by the Federal Reserve has now put us in a huge dilemma. When you put $5 trillion in the hands of consumers, think of those as drugs in the system. Of course, we're going to feel pretty good. Of course, the stock markets are high. Of course, companies are earning more money. But he said that now things are changing. And, And you can't sit here and say something bad may not happen. So Jamie Dimon saying, listen, anybody out there that's telling you nothing bad's going to happen, you're, you're just kind to, to fool yourself. His next comment, this is something I say a lot. I'm not trying to scare people. Jason, I don't want to scare anybody. I don't want to tell you what you need to know. And Jamie Dimon saying, I'm saying the same thing. He goes... And for him, it's pretty simple. He goes, I'm in the category that something's going to go wrong. Right? And he's talking about, well, look at what you did. You have no history of being able, even when you didn't do things like this, your history of fixing things sucks. And therefore, uh, we're on a sugar high. We're getting ready to come off the sugar high, if you want some positive, here's here was his positive. I'm not saying that it ends in a depression, but I think there's more inflationary forces out there. To Jason's point, so. Again, we'll see not very positive stuff. So uh, the economy, without a doubt, has slowed. We we know this. But Jamie Dimon saying, hey, guys, man, you got everybody addicted to debt, and this isn't going to end well. And, oh, by the way, uh, you know, and look at Washington. They keep spending like drunken sailors. Uh, There's good reason to believe that Jason could be right. Like, listen, inflation's not done, right? Yeah, I can add a little more to it, you know, because we're going to have a market downturn at some point. Uh, I don't know if it'll be a, sh- a short one. You know, they, they, we like to blame everything on COVID. I, I get the feeling that everything that happened during COVID would have happened without COVID, but there would have been some different fingers being pointed. However, I find it massively interesting, Joe, when I'm, I was watching uh, through the, the Thanksgiving holiday as Jeff Bezos, right, Amazon, sells off a billion dollars of his stock. But then I turn on the TV last night, and Amazon's bragging about their 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 biggest Thanksgiving holiday sales ever. And I'll say this: what a great time to sell a billion dollars in stock. You know that that press release of record sales is going to go on because you don't want to be the guy that's that's sold at the very very top, right, Joe? You don't want to sell your billion dollars at the very top. They're gonna, they're gonna, what are they going to blame you for for selling at the very top? Jeff Bezos is selling a billion dollars in stock. And he's telling you what's going to happen in the markets. And, Joe, what could be a little different this time is, you know, the reality is most of the market is the richest money in the world. You know, the 401Ks, yeah, that helps, but that's attached to a lot of companies, you know, like Walmart. So the biggest companies and the biggest spenders in the world, they're the ones that are – when that market takes a dip and a big, hard dip I think it'll take, I don't think that money's going to sit on the sidelines and then go back in after the dip, Joe. What is Jeff Bezos going to do with that billion dollars? That's the question. I talk about inflation coming back. What if he buys a bunch of farmland, right? What if he buys companies, right, Joe? If, if you take a bunch of money out of the markets and you actually put it into things, not not investments in companies, that's going to add to more inflation. You know, what, what's the price of farmland going to be if Jeff Bezos buys a billion dollars of farmland? It's not going to make the prices go down, right? So, so there's there's so much going on. And when you see big guys like Diamond and you see Bezos making these moves – 
you, you got to pay attention, Joe, because it's, it's not going to be the exact same time crash as we have before. First time ever as CEO of, of uh, J.P. Morgan. Uh, it's interesting, right? Uh, let's all just agree. It, the setup here isn't very good. Uh, I mean, think of, think of what we just talked about. Jamie Dimon said, well, I'm not saying it's going to end in depression. Right? I mean, that's not a great comment. And at the same time saying, by the way, more inflation's coming. And this is exactly, you know, if you go back and listen to Jason and I during COVID, this is what we kind of were talking about. We said, hey, the Fed's in this box. And, and look at the spending from our federal government. Yesterday, we had a horrible two-year auction, uh, which that's, hasn't been the case. You, you know, normally it's the, it's the, the 10 year, the 20 year, the third. Those were the, were, you know, were the bad, not the two year. Thankfully, the five year, so we, we have two, you have an auction in the morning, an auction in the afternoon. Normally how they go, the morning is the, is the shorter dates and the afternoons, the longer dates. That's, that's normally uh, how it goes. So yesterday it was two years in the morning, five years in the afternoon. Uh, the five-year was better, thankfully. Uh, but, but again, uh, the, 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 the dealers having to take double the amount that they would normally be taking. I, I don't know how this all works out. I really don't. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason here on this Tuesday. Uh, the Dow is up one fifty. The S and P is up fourteen. The Nasdaq is up fifty points. Uh, crude oil is up two dollars. Gold's up twenty five dollars here. Two thousand thirty eight. Silver up almost 30 cents here, bumping up on $25. Remember, don't forget our friends at Y Refi. Listen, we don't know. There, there's question marks out there. Unfortunately, most of the question marks look like they're going to end badly, right? I mean, that's just, you know, boom and bust. I mean, that's, that, that's not the system I created. You didn't create it. That's what they gave us. Ten, up to 10.25% fixed rates of return. What does that mean? That means every day you wake up, it's the exact same. Every month, your statement's the same. You're going to make 10.25% every single year. You can turn your monthly income on. You can turn it off. You can do whatever you want. There are no fees. Well, what if I need my money back early? You know how you do like with, uh, with annuities, man. If you want to get your money out early, they slap you uh, with all these penalties. Uh-uh. You get all your principal back. Check them out. That's all I'm saying. Check them out. It's not correlated to the stock market. doesn't care about the Fed. InvestYRefi.com or just call them. 888-YREFI24. 888-Y-REFI-24. You know what you need? Any other reason to maybe be more diversified? I don't know. Did you catch the president yesterday? Uh, I, I don't even know why they let him speak at all. They really sh He should go back to the Joe Biden that was campaigning uh, in the 2020 election. Remember, he didn't, campaign, he didn't campaign at all. He should go back to that. Here was Joe Biden yesterday. Any corporation that has not brought their prices back down, even as inflation has come down, it has? Really? We got a negative inflation number somewhere? Apparently, this the Einstein that we elected thinks that because the pace of inflation the way the Federal Reserve calculated, has slowed. It's not going up as fast. Somehow means that inflation came down. It didn't. No. That means prices are still rising. Right? Just not as fast as they were rising last year. Uh, but somehow, Jason, he thinks that, uh, that they should just start lowering their prices. And by the way, if you're not, you're price gouging.
thing about price is, you know, how, how you know, you can't really gouge uh, if someone's going to pay the price, first of all. Second of all, it's not gouging if uh, the margin fits. You know, if the price of what it takes to get to whatever it is on the market goes up, the price goes up. I mean, that's essentially how it works. Now, yeah, there are some times where a little greed enters, but, you know, if it gets too greedy, people just stop buying. There's always, not always, there's usually uh, some competition out there to choose from, right, Joe? Yeah, oh, a- absolutely. But I just thought, again, this is this is what we're dealing with here. They, they truly don't get what they're doing. Uh, Jamie Dimon does. I know I do. Jason does. We've been talking a lot about money in your bank. And I keep telling you, get it out of there, please. And I, I hope you do it with us. I hope you put some gold and silver away, and I hope you do it with us. I, I do. It, and money that you have in Wall Street, I hope you have it with, with, with my son Joey. I hope you do. But I hope you have it somewhere that isn't correlated, that isn't a bank. Let me give you another example of, of how little banks value your money. And I keep saying this. When this whole thing ends... And Jamie Dimon says, well, I don't know if it'll be a depression. I'm, I'm saying it's going to be. And the new currency comes along. Those of you that have had large amounts of money sitting in your bank, you're asking for trouble. Here's the latest example. A woman named Terry Johnson. She's from Utah. Not that that matters. She had $130,000 stored in a separate account at Wells Fargo. In 2021, she had sold a home. And that sale of the home, that money that she had was left over. She sold the home, bought a bought another home and had money left over. And and she put it in a separate account at the bank. She had four accounts at Wells Fargo. Now remember, all these accounts, they add them all up to get to the 250. But here was what was interesting. This particular account, Terry didn't do anything. In other words, she didn't write any checks. She didn't make any withdrawals. She didn't make any deposits. She just left it there. Remember how much I told you how much the central bank and bankers hate? You have money sitting there and don't, right? She didn't do anything. She had too much money for Wells Fargo, right, to charge a fee, right? But she didn't do anything. Well, that money just said, we can't charge any fees. Well, guess what Wells Fargo did? They shut her account. But not only did they shut her account, they didn't give her her money. Matter of fact, Wells Fargo told her that her funds were considered unclaimed property. Now, let me remind you, she had four accounts with this bank. She was obviously using other accounts to do things. So they knew this woman was alive. They knew this woman was was using their bank. But nope, they decided this money. Now, she only had put the money in there in 2021. So it's not like it was sitting there for 15 years. They told her that she would have to uh, call that Wells Fargo no longer had her money, and that she had to call the state of Utah's unclaimed property division to get her money back. And when she called the state treasurer, they said that the money was never sent to their office, and apparently, Jason... Wells Fargo said, oh, well, we had it in an a, 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 we took it out of your account. We put it in a different account. We were going to send it. We just hadn't done it yet. Here's the long and the short of it. Eventually, this woman got her money back. Yeah. There you go. How much? 
Who do you think they're really going to do when they have to do it? Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on this Tuesday. Gold's up twenty seven two thousand thirty nine in change. Uh, gold uh, silver's up thirty one cents twenty four dollars ninety nine cents. Uh, today's special. I'm just going to tell you right now. Jump on this thing. Uh, I don't have a ton, a very limited amount. It's going to be $10 Liberties at $1,100. $10 Liberties at $1,100. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for you, I got this special, and gold was only $2,025. So gold's got up another $15. Uh, before I even got this out there. So this is going to be a huge opportunity here. Don't let it pass you by. $10 liberties at $1,100. I'm going to do just what I did yesterday so people can get them. I'm going to put a maximum of 20. You can't buy more than 20 of them at $1,100. 800 951 Zero five nine two silver. I'm just going to tell you right now, silver prices are down to over twenty five now. Cases of silver eagles fifteen thousand seven fifty. They're going to be sixteen thousand plus tomorrow. Rolls of silver eagles and I look. We are so much below everybody else. Rolls of silver eagles six hundred forty five dollars eight hundred nine five one. Zero five nine two. Uh, now gold's up thirty now. To, uh, twenty twenty forty two. Uh, Jason, things are moving quickly here. Uh, th- this shouldn't be unexpected. Uh, the, if the Fed is, is done r- with the rate hiking cycle, they're talking rate cuts. Uh, dollar weakness. China has just been obliterating the gold markets here. Uh, and now the computers, right, you know, that they just do what they do, right? This is another breakout here. Uh, gold at the highs of the year, staring down all-time record highs. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at some historical charts, Joe. Silver. What was it uh, average closing price in 2003, 20 years ago? Four dollars and eighty-eight cents. Yeah, we're five x that today. With all the ups and downs, we're five x of that today. It ended that year up twenty-seven percent. By the way, in two thousand three, four eighty-eight was the average price. It ended, ended up. Now, you look at that, and I was looking at at, at uh, the years that we've. Well, let's just go from when I when I joined Patriot in two thousand eighteen. The average closing price was fifteen seventy-one. Okay. It's gone up to sixteen twenty two in two thousand nineteen, to twenty five fourteen. It dipped in twenty twenty one to twenty one seventy six. This year, its average closing price is twenty three thirty one. If you look at the high, the high closes of each of the years, in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, we had closes daily closes in in the mid twenty nine dollar range. You can see the suppression. They don't want it to hit thirty. Uh, twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three, we've had closes in the twenty six dollar range. It's very likely, Joe, that if if silver tickles $30 an ounce, it just blows up and just goes. Gold is doing the same thing. Gold is, uh, the, the, the record close is $2,058. This year we had a close of 2053 We just really got up close to it, right? Sure seems like, you know, you, you get to $2,100 and gold just runs. Silver at $30, it just runs. And that, that could happen very quickly. I mean, what was it? it Were we below twenty dollars an ounce for silver not too long ago, Joe? Right? Yeah, right. I remember, and then silver came crashing now. down, right, and, and and roaring back here. I remember when silver got below twenty one dollars. I was begging everybody uh, to get in and buy here. We are nowhere near the highs here. Just saying, nope. nowhere near it. Uh, when we look at what. Uh, it, Again, supply, demand, you look at inventory levels in London, inventory levels in the COMEX, inventory levels in Shanghai, 
Uh, they're at or near all-time record lows. Uh, silver, it really is setting up. I mean, I'll just say this. So there's so many people out there talking about uh, the solar demand and, and green energy demand, and, and there's the math doesn't work. There's just not that much. You can't mine that much silver to reach these goals. Uh, but even still, they're going to do their best. Um, and, and I think that the suppression that we've seen uh, in silver and gold are going away. Uh, and, and the reason is pretty simple. Uh, when, it, when it comes to gold, it, it's really loosely based on what? On the dollar. And what they're saying right now is we're giving up, right? We're done rallying the dollar here. Expect the dollar to go lower. Uh, We're talking about rate cuts. But the problem is this tsunami of debt is so overwhelming now. It's really hard to ignore. Uh, And now with a slowing economy on top of it, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens at the city level, at the state level, because they rely on sales tax, uh, which is coming way down. Uh, we know about the federal level, right? Income tax money keeps falling, and at the same time, Jason, they just keep spending. Uh, I, I, and again, we thought we'd already be in a recession. Well, I should, let me. I thought we'd be in a recession already. You know, go back to January, February. I was like, hey, gold's going to be at new all-time highs. And, you know, $23, $24, we, we aren't there, right? We're just at the slowdown. Now, I think we're going to get there now. We're going to probably get there next year. And, and, and unfortunately, again, the longer it goes, right, the, I think the higher the spike up we're going to see. Uh, but, yeah, silver's going to be really interesting because you, I mean, you could make the case that silver should be fifty dollars right now. Uh, that, that I mean, we're gold. I think gold, you know, twenty four, twenty five hundred, probably uh, a good place to be. Silver's got a longer way to go. Either way, though, add to it here. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Jason and I, we're coming right back to wrap it up. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason wrapping up this Tuesday. Make sure to get out to YouTube, uh, like us, give us the thumbs up, rumble as well. Uh, we got Barry Jones coming in the half empty cup. He's always great. Uh, what, what, what he brings. So tune in for that as well. Uh, the big sale of the day. Think about this. Goes up almost thirty dollars. Yesterday we ran the twenties at twenty one ninety five. Gold's up thirty. Twenty dollars gold right now. You're looking at twenty two hundred and forty, and that it's probably twenty two fifty, maybe even twenty two sixty. Because like I said, this gold's up almost twenty dollars since I reset prices. We got ten dollar gold right now, eleven hundred dollars. Two tens. That would be twenty two hundred dollars. Gold's two thousand forty in change. I mean, uh, that, that's that's minute. That's minute prices over spot today. 800 951 And again, Silver Eagle, $645 a roll. Our competitors out there, like $665, $670. Cases of Silver Eagles, $15,750. And again, Silver at $25 tomorrow, I'm, I promise you. Going to be at least sixteen hundred dollars for that case, maybe more. I, I don't know what silver and gold will do tomorrow, uh, but Jason, uh, it, it is clear that everybody, at least out there, is saying they don't see where the Fed can keep hiking. And I think a lot of it has to do with data today. The Dow wasn't doing so well. You know why the Dow rallied today? The University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report. A huge jump in people saying, "Yeah, things are things have gotten <laughs> tight." All you know, all of a sudden now, people are talking about recession in this report. Yeah, Joe, and and when it comes to gold and silver, uh, it feels like we're going right back to where we were, uh, 2020, 2021, 2022, where 
if gold and silver happens to slip a few bucks here and there on, on intermittent days, uh, the premiums just go up on those days, and the physical market's saying, no, you're not getting it cheaper anymore. It really feels like we're there again, Joe, where, yeah, let's say gold goes down 20 bucks tomorrow. And the price of gold for you to buy it is just the same. It's one of those things. We, we, unfortunately, the spot price, as Joe mentions many times, it's a paper price. The physical markets have shown during COVID and up to now that these premiums will come in hard and, and steep if the supply is harder to get, Joe. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, again, I think for a lot of people, uh, they're, they're, they're sitting here thinking to themselves, you know, hey, I'm not sure what's going to happen. You know, for a lot of people, it's, it's, it's a money problem, right? Hey, you know what? Man, it's holiday time. It's Christmas time. I, 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 we're, we're, we're low on money. And then for the people that do, they're uncertain because they're like, well, gosh, the Dow's still 35000 Right, you know, and and, and and there's guys out there saying forty thousand, which it could, right? If the Fed, I, you know, I don't know what the Fed's going to do, but if in January, uh, before they announce official recession, they start cutting rates, and then we go to, I don't know, a Fed fund rate of two percent, then yeah, maybe. Uh, but look at, I mean, look at gold. Gold's up what, like seventeen, eighteen percent for the year, year to date uh, this year. So it, it, it's something where I, I think that everybody's come to the, the realization. That the debts aren't going away. The amount of interest in buying it continues to dwindle. And the gold and silver markets are getting ready to make a run. 800 951 0592. Jason and I, we're coming right back with the Half 50 Cup.